Okay, so if there is one thing I have neglected here on my little reloading YouTube channel, it is 357 Magnum and 38 Special. I picked up a uh, Ruger GP100 Match Champion and a Henry Big Boy Silver. What feels like a couple months ago, but it was eight months ago. And I have only shot them once. That's just sad. That's just really, really sad. So in the previous video that we did, I loaded up some uh, 125 grain uh, Hornady XTPs in 38 Special. And then I just put the guns in the safe and forgot about them. So that is just ridiculous. And today is the day to change that. I'm gonna narrow the scope. The, in the, you know, the previous loadings, we loaded up uh, a bunch of rounds and shot both guns. This one, we're just gonna shoot the revolver. And these will be the first 357 Magnum loads I've ever loaded, ever. So, bit of a learning process here. What I'm gonna use is the 158 grain Hornet EXTP. I've got several, uh, focus, focus, there we go. Yep, it's a Hornet EXTP hollow point. Should be a butt kicker, but we're just gonna do some plinking. Get some velocity data, maybe shoot a group or two, but uh, probably more plink plinking than anything. I've got several molds for cast bullets. You know, that's eventually where I wanna go with this is uh, start casting and powder coating bullets and shooting those primarily in these guns. But before I get there, I figure let's, uh, let's start basic with some, some jacketed bullets load data straight out of a manual and just keep it simple. I'm gonna use Winchester 296. I have tons of this stuff because of uh, 300 blackout, so that'll be our powder for today. Going to use Winchester uh, small pistol magnum primers, the uh, WSPM primers. And that's pretty much it. All right, as far as load data goes, we're just gonna go straight out of the Hornady manual. Oh, and speaking of brass, I did buy, uh, actually I bought a couple hundred pieces of uh, Starline 357 Magnum brass, and I bought some 38 Special brass as well. This is uh, pretty nice brass, never been fired. I was measuring a few of them. Our, our, uh, Max case length is 1.290 and the trim length is 1.280. Most of these are coming in at like 1.277, 1.28. Yeah, there you go. That one's just over trim. 278. 278. So most of them are in that ballpark. So I'm not going to worry about trimming them. For the 158 grain uh, XTP, the Winchester 296 data, they show a starting charge of 12.4 and a max charge of 16.0. I think what I want to do is just load up two different charge weights, just 25 of each. We'll shoot, uh, we'll shoot a, a few of them over the chronograph, maybe shoot a group with each, and then just use the rest for plinking. I'd like to have a light load, and I'd also like to, to feel what a uh, you know full 357 Magnum feels like. So I want to basically load up 25 light ones and 25 heavy ones. I think what I'm going to go with is 13.5 and 15.0 grains. So that's still a little bit under their max. So it shouldn't be crazy. And we'll check pressure signs as we shoot and uh, make sure that they don't do anything funny. But should be nice charges to go out and uh, just play around with. So 13.5 and 15.5, and or I'm sorry, 13.5 and, and 15.0 and they show an overall length of 1.590. So let's get the sizing die in the press and get down to it. All right, so we're using a set of lee dies. The instructions get a little bit funky for uh, 357 Magnum. Sizing die, we just take it down until it touches the shell holder like normal. But I do want to put a little flare on these guys, just so the 
sew the bullet seat nicely. And this is where things get funky. So for a 38 Special, you back it off one turn. But for 357 Magnum, it would be two and three quarters of a turn. Okay, there's two and three quarters of a turn off the shell holder. All right, let's run one through and see what that does. This is a carbide sizing die, so you don't have to lube the cases. And there's the... That felt like it went way the hell down in there. But it doesn't seem to have flared the case like crazy or anything. So I'm going to go down just a little bit more. There we go. So now the bullet is sitting down in there a little bit easier. So that should be just about perfect. So I need to run through my 50 cases and size them and flare them. And then we'll be ready for primers. Okay, resizing is done. Just finishing up priming here. Everything going according to plan. All right, so Winchester 296 is a very good metering powder. So I think I'm just gonna throw the, throw the charges. So let's... get the powder measure set up. Okay, so the powder measures throw in 13.5. Looking good, so I'll go ahead and throw these first 25 charges and we will get our bullet seating die set up. All right, there's the first 25. Give it a quick visual inspection. Looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit bullets on top of these guys, so hopefully I don't spill powder everywhere. And then we'll be ready to set up the bullet seating die and the crimp die. So like the expanding die, the seating die has some interesting instructions for uh, 357 Magnum. So it's actually, instead of three turns off the, die, off the uh, shell holder, it's four and three quarters. So one, two, three, four. and three quarters. And as far as it reads, I guess the factory crimp die is the same as normal. Down until it touches and then tighten it down.
All right, let's get our seating depth adjusted. What was our overall length? 1.590 is our target. Should be right about the cantilever, so I'm going to go ahead and seat it down until we're close to there. Okay. One point six one zero, so we're about uh, twenty thousandths long. One point five nine four. One point five eight nine, that's close enough. Let's go ahead and seed another one. Whoa. One point five eight three. I might stick with this because these are uh, not really very far into the cantilever. 1.584. So yeah, it looks like we're a couple thousandths short, but if you look, there's still a lot of cantilever hanging out above the case mouth. So I'm just going to call that good enough. That seems... Uh, I'm going to run them back through one more time. And then read it again. 1 1.581. 1.583. 1.587. So, yep, a little bit short, but that's okay. Let's see. The factory crimp die works. Screw it down until it touches. There we go. And I usually go about a half a turn. There we go. So that's. crimped into the cantilever a little bit and looking pretty good. So I guess what I should also check at this point is to make sure these fit in my revolver. Let's see. Yep, they slide right in. They don't stick out. So there's, uh, you know, got a little bit of wiggle room there. So they're not too long and they're falling right in and coming back out no problem. Good deal. I think we've just loaded our first successful 357 magnums, hopefully. So that's pretty much it. I just need to go through and seat these 25 and then readjust my powder measure, throw 25 more charges and seat those guys. And that'll be the end of it.
All right, so loading has gone off without a single problem. Everything as expected, which is always good for the first time you reload a new caliber. So no weird die issues or unexpected problems at all. Looking forward to trying these. Can't believe it's been eight freaking months since I shot this gun, so... I can't let that sort of delay happen again. We're going to we're going to keep this series rolling definitely. So, 50 rounds ready to go. Let's hit the range. Okay, let's start off with the boring stuff here. I've got a target out at about 15 yards. I've got our actually it's exactly 15 yards. I've got our Caldwell ballistic precision chronograph and I've got a little table here set up with a rest. I want to shoot Maybe a cylinder of each load just to get velocity and we'll see, you know, how they're grouping and whether the sights are on. And once we get through this, then we'll switch over and have some fun on some steel to finish off the box. But first of all, we got to find out if it's hitting where we're aiming. Tell you what, I'll start off by just loading up one. I got to learn how to do this and where the hell, I think I want an empty chamber in front of the hammer, right? Yep, okay. And then, nope, shit, wrong way. Okay. Uh, that's better. Okay. <laughs> All right, left hand dot. Let's see if it blows up. Okay, 1,073 feet per second. Let's have a look at the brass, see if we got any pressure signs. I'll tell you what, I'm a little bit surprised that was 1,073 feet per second. I figured that first load was gonna be very slow because in the Hornady manual, their test barrel was an eight incher and ours is a 3.2 inch. So I expected much lower velocities. So now I'm wondering what that, uh, what that 15 grain load is going to be. This one was 13.5. The brass looks fine. I don't see any issues. Huh. Where did I hit? Oh, okay. So I was, I was doing a, I ran out of two inch dots. So I'm, I've got those huge three inch, uh, three inch dots today. <clears throat> and where I hit was right at the top of my sight blade. So I, you know, I had the top of my front sight blade right at the bottom of the orange and that's where it hit. So that's good which means uh, we hit right at point of aim, which is awesome. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna load up six more, fill up the cylinder, and let's just go ahead and run through them. It definitely smacks a lot harder than I remember those 38 specials shooting. This is the first time I've ever shot 357 Magnum. I'm kind of new to the pistol world, so not a lot of experience in these things. I'm trying to mind my thumbs and fingers and keep them out from in front of the cylinder. Is that it or do I have one more? Yep, that was it. Primers all look nice. The brass is uh, mostly falling out no problem. Yeah, good deal. I am very, very happy with that group. 15 yards is a, is a challenge for me with a pistol. I like the sights on this gun, shoots uh, pretty easy. Boy, velocity was all over the place. The lowest was 957 and the highest was 1124. So average one, 
1,049 feet per second with a 55 feet per second standard deviation. Maybe this shorter barrel needs some faster powders. I don't know, but. So I'm thinking this 15 grain load might just be uh, freaking hot. Let's find out. Let's shoot one and see if it blows our face off. Okay, that was only 1,087 feet per second. Primer definitely flatter. You know, I bought some speed loaders. I should have brought them out to, uh, to test them, but I didn't. We'll save that for next time. All right, I got a full cylinder here, six shots. So let's, uh, let's shoot them and see, see where they hit. All right, was that it? I think that was it. Yep. All right, primer's definitely flatter, but I don't really see anything to worry about. Brass is extracting nice and easy. All right, what were the velocities? Let's see, our average was 1161, minimum 1087, maximum 1203. So once again, kind of velocity is a little bit all over the place. Standard deviation 37.3. I'll have to look into that, see if it's normal, but good deal. All right, let's switch over and just have some fun, shoot at some steel. I kind of set these targets out a little bit too far. I should have brought them in closer to make myself look better. That's all right. Got to get better somehow, right? So we've got steel at about 10 yards, 12 yards, and about 25 yards. So let's get started. I've got a cylinder full of our uh, 13 and a half grain load. So that's what we're gonna start with. We'll start out with the, with the five plates on the tree. <laughs> Missed it. That's better. All right, settle down. That's better. Was that it or do I have one more? That was it. I definitely should have brought out those speed loaders or Glock needs to come up with a 15 round revolver or something. All right, let's put a few on the longer plate. See if we can hit that guy. See if I can settle down a little bit. No. What am I doing? I've got to be shooting under it. All right, this is embarrassing. Let's aim crazy high. I see it moving, so I think I hit it. It's just not smacking it that hard, maybe. Let's try it again. Is that it or one more? All right, I gotta go look at this plate. I don't even see the one spot where I hit it. Huh. 
Okay, so I guess it's not the plate's fault. Let's go with the closer plate here, see if I can hit it. Okay, let's try the longer one again. It's making me mad. Side alignment, side picture, trigger, trigger squeeze, miss. Hey, I hit it. I was kind of aiming a little bit low. All right, let me try and duplicate that. There we go. I guess it was just finding the right spot to aim. Okay, that's it. Okay, now we're up to the 15 grain charges. And you know what? When we were shooting paper, the 15s didn't group as well as the 13 and a half. I think that was my fault. I think I just wasn't really paying that much attention. I don't know. Let's shoot at the swinging plates and see if we can work our way. Let's go right to left. This ought to put a wall up on them. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll try double action. It's kind of aiming a little bit left that time. I don't know what my, sometimes my brain just goes a little bit fuzzy. I think that was a fuzzy brain situation. That's good, there's only five plates and we got four shots left. So let's go ahead and put these next four on the four remaining plates. Focus, side alignment, side picture, trigger squeeze. Huh. My left thumb keeps getting in the way of my uh, trigger finger tip. I need to find a better, a better place for it to hang out. Okay, one more. Don't screw it up. I screwed it up. These rounds certainly do feel powerful, but they're not, uh, they're not uncomfortable to shoot in any way. You could shoot these all day long. All right, let's go back to my old nemesis, the long plate. See if we can put some double action shots on that guy. That stupid left thumb. I need to find a good spot for it. There we go. Let's try that. Miss. There we go. One more. Okay, three fast ones on the close plate. Whoa. Wow, I screwed that up bad. <laughs> That's gonna take some getting used to, fast shooting and double action. Wow. Tell you what, we got six rounds left. Let's, uh, let's spend them on that. Let's try and do those rapid fire double action because that just freaking, my brain did not even comprehend what was going on there. 
I'm not sure if all guns are this way, but I mean, you know, the, the double action definitely has some herky jerky spots where, you know, it's kind of, I don't, it, it's not like this smooth, long travel. It's, uh, it's got some hangups. So that's just going to take some time to get used to. All right. Two rapid fire shots on the close plate. <sighs> Make sure my freaking thumb is out of the way. All right, here we go. I missed the second one. That wasn't all that rapid fire either. All right, let's try it again. Two more. Worrying about my stupid thumb more than anything. I just need to keep it the hell out of the way. Pretty sure I missed the second one there as well. There we go. Okay, two shots. Let's hit them both. Somewhat rapid. <laughs> Miss. <laughs> Miss. Oh, crap. Now I gotta go in and load more. Nope, can't do that. All right. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. So I'll tell you what, let's get back into the bench, talk over anything that we might need to talk over before we wrap this up. Okay, not much to discuss here, really. Very happy with the groups. I need to uh, move those sights a little bit to bring it right just a touch. But as far as group size go, I think this one I, I just didn't. I wasn't bearing down quite as much on this one as I was on this one. So I'm not prepared to say that this load sh actually shot worse than this load, but actually both groups I'm very happy with. As I mentioned out there, 15 yards is a bit of a challenge for me with a pistol because I'm just not that good. But otherwise, very happy. Gun functioned great. The ammo did great. So this might make for a pretty boring video, but you know what? That's good. The first time ever reloading a new cartridge, by God, it ought to be boring. Keep it simple, have some fun, and we definitely uh, accomplished that. So I will see you guys next time, and it will not be eight months from now, I promise.